And I would like to introduce our next speaker, is uh, Dr. Sylvain Chambo. And the title of presentation will be the role of the electron and hole transport layer on the degradation mechanism in inverted organic solar cells. The so floor is yours, please. Okay, thank you. So good morning, everyone. And uh, thank, I would like to thank the organizer to give me the opportunity to present uh, <clears throat> some work we have uh, been uh, working on in the uh, University of Bordeaux in the IMS laboratory. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about the role of the, uh, the electron and hole transport layer on degradation mechanism in inverted solar cells. So this is the outline of my talk. First of all, I will uh, present briefly, very briefly, the problematic of aging in OPV. And I will present you two case studies we, we, we did. First on uh, photodegradation, uh, and we studied the influence of the bottom interface. And then on thermal, thermal degradation, and the influence of the top interfaces. And I will finish with conclusions. So the problematic of aging, so as you uh, all know, I think, uh, so you can have uh, different uh, stresses uh, uh, which, will be, uh, which can be applied to the, uh, to, to, to the organic solar cells. So you, you have some extrinsic, extrinsic factor like oxygen and water, and it can be mitigated by uh, uh, encapsulation but you have some intrinsic ones, so heat and light. And these, uh, these factors, they can affect the active layer, of course, but also uh, the interfaces, the electrode, and you can have a lot of different degradation mechanisms. So we try, what we try to do in our studies is to separate as much as possible the different uh, stresses uh, applied to the cell to, uh, to try to identify the different degradation mechanisms. So first, we, we, we asked ourselves a question. Uh, the, does the metal oxide we use in inverted uh, architecture, so zinc oxide or titanium oxide, uh, can, have, uh, can induce a degradation pathway uh, at the interface with the, with the active layer? Uh, and we wanted to study this even uh, without uh, oxygen. So we, we, we performed our study uh, under inert atmosphere. So this is a work of uh, Aurélien Tonnebis and Giorgio Matana. So we used P3HTPCBM as active layer and we studied four kinds of devices. So uh, devices with zinc oxide as ETL or titanium oxide and we aged them uh, under uh, complete uh, so, so, uh, solar spectrum, let's say, with, with, with the UV and we performed the same aging uh, study, but we used a UV filter and we cut the UV below uh, 400 nanometer. And uh, we studied the, the burning uh, phase of the degradation, so the first 100 hours. And as you can see, when you cut the UV uh, in both kind of devices, zinc oxide based or titanium oxide, you, okay, you, you have some degradation, but you don't have any uh, or very small uh, change of VOC. But as soon as you have some UV present in the, during the aging condition, we, ha we, we, we observed a drop of the VOC. And uh, what was very interesting also was to observe that this drop, this loss of VOC, was, uh, was stronger in the case of tit titanium-based uh, devices. So we decided to go a bit, a bit further and uh, we tried to, uh, to identify the degradation mechanism causing this, this VOC loss. So first, we focused on titanium, titanium oxide-based uh, devices, and we uh, did some CV analysis, and we, uh, we extracted the flat burn potential uh, of the devices uh, along aging uh, without UV and with UV. When you cut the UV, you don't have, uh, we have just a small change of the flat burn potential. But as soon as you have some UV present during the aging condition, then you have a strong shift uh, of the flat point potential. We also studied in parallel the, uh, uh, the, some thin film, uh, P3HTPCBM, on top of titanium oxide, which we aged under inert condition. And we, we studied the evolution of the different peak uh, corresponding to the oxide, but also of the active layer. And uh, in the case of titanium uh, oxide-based devices or samples, we observed only when UV is present, 
uh, rigid, uh, rigid shifts of the all the core level levels of the of the titanium oxide, but also uh, of the uh, organic layer. We also observed uh, a shift of the valence band uh, maximum. And so the, the combination of those two studies uh, led us to the conclusion that uh, there might be uh, a formation of a dipole at the interface during uh, aging with UV. And this, the formation of such dipole could explain the loss of VOC we observed on PV devices. So when we moved to a uh, zinc oxide-based sample, the story was a bit different. And when we uh, analyzed the uh, Motschotky plots, we didn't observe uh, any modification of the valence band, uh, the, the flat band uh, potential, but we observed some, uh, uh, some kind of doping. When we, uh, we, we analyzed the XPS uh, spectra of the thin film on the zinc oxide, we did not observe the, the shift of the peak we had observed with uh, titanium oxide, uh, but we observed some, some, change in, some changes uh, in the oxygen peak here. And the combination of the two analyses led us to the conclusion that there had been some photodegradation at the interface with zinc oxide and active layers, and this degradation has also led to the loss of VOC. So the, the, the conclusion of our uh, study was that uh, in, in both cases, titanium or zinc oxide-based devices, we observed uh, a, a drop of the VOC, but the origin was different. In one case, we attributed it to, uh, to the formation of a, a, a dipole, and in the other case, we, uh, we attributed it to uh, the formation of some defects at the interface. So now we'll move to the, the second study uh, we performed. So this was performed by uh, William Greenbank. And we, uh, we, we wanted to understand the, uh, the influence of the HTL and the electrode on the thermal uh, uh, stability of uh, inverted devices. The question was, is there a more robust uh, architecture? So we, uh, we still studied the PFHTPCBM uh, based devices. And we, uh, we, we changed the HTL. Uh, so we studied two kinds of oxide, molybdenum oxide and tungsten oxide and also P.PSS. And as electrode, we studied uh, aluminum and silver electrode. So we aged the devices under ISO D2 protocol, and we regularly uh, characterize the cells. So this is the evolution of the, the, the PCE in the case of devices with silver electrode. As you can see, the devices with pilot and, and uh, tungsten oxide are quite stable along aging. But as soon as you have some molybdenum oxide, uh, you have a sudden drop of the, view of the, of, of the performance and the, the device is less stable. If we analyze the, uh, the IV uh, evolution, we can observe that this, this uh, different degradation uh, kinetic uh, is due to some, some loss of VOC. So we wanted to know if uh, this, uh, this loss of VOC uh, was only due to the presence of molybdenum oxide. So we, we, we changed the, the top electrode and we replaced this silver with aluminum. And as soon as we replaced this, this silver electrode with, with aluminum, we did not observe such drop of uh, VOC. So this VOC loss uh, is really specific to the combination of molybdenum oxide and silver. So we decided to, uh, to go a bit further and to try to understand uh, the origin of this, uh, of this, of this, this, uh, this degradation. And we, uh, we suspected some diffusion of silver in the, in the active layer causing this VOC loss. So we did some uh, RBS experiments uh, on different kind of uh, samples, so molybdenum uh, oxide and silver uh, uh, based samples, but also molybdenum oxide and aluminum. And we aged this sample under uh, uh, yeah, ISOS-D2 protocol. In the case of uh, aluminum sample, we did not observe any change of the, of the, of the molybdenum and uh, aluminum uh, uh, peak, which, uh, which means that the interfaces between the, the interface between uh, uh, the, uh, the metal and the oxide is still, uh, well, didn't change during aging. But uh, as soon as uh, silver is present, then we observe some changes in the slope of the silver and the uh, molybdenum. 
uh, which indicates that there can be an intermixing between the, the, two, uh, uh, well, the two layers. Uh, so it, it, it can be due to, uh, to some uh, interdiffusion, but it can also be attributed to uh, some morphological change. And uh, we did some uh, atomic force microscopy and we observed an increase of the roughness of the electrode. So it was a bit disappointing because we couldn't really uh, say if there had been some interdiffusion be uh, between the layers because due to the, uh, the, the roughness increase, such uh, thing we observed with uh, RBS <coughs> could be only attributed to a uh, change in the morphology. So we had to probe the interface between the bulk heterojunction and the HTL to see if there had been really some uh, interdiffusion. And uh, in order to do that, we, uh, we started a collaboration with Stanford University and uh, uh, Professor Doskart uh, group. And we, uh, we did some fracture analysis of uh, our sample before and after aging. So the interesting thing with this technique is that uh, this mechanical uh, testing can uh, give you some information about the, the fracture path, so you can see what is the weakest point in the sample, but also, and also it gives you the fracture energy. And interestingly, when uh, the fracture occurs at the <coughs> interface, uh, using one side of the sample after uh, uh, fracturing, we can uh, use some uh, XPS to, uh, to understand uh, well, to see uh, the modification of the, of the surface. So we uh, studied uh, silver samples with molybdenum oxide and tungsten oxide. So in red, you have the tungsten oxide sample, and in blue, the molybdenum oxide. And at the beginning, the fracture occurs at the uh, bulk heterojunction uh, HTL uh, interface here. Uh, as you can see on the XPS, uh, so we did some XPS depth profile, and you can see that the interfaces are well defined and there is no intermixing. You have the, the molybdenum oxide uh, layer and then the, uh, the, the silver, and everything is, uh, is clear. But as soon as you edged the sample, so you have uh, an increase of the fracture energy, the, the fracture path uh, still occurs at the uh, bulk heterojunction HTL uh, interface. And when we take a look to the XPS depth, depth profile, we can clearly see that there is an intermixing of all the layers. So you have some, uh, some uh, well, uh, organic material in the HTL and you have diffusion of silver. So we observed this intermixing in the case of molybdenum oxide-based samples, but also in the case of tungsten oxide-based samples. And this intermixing can explain the increase of the fracture energy. And, uh, uh, and only in the case of molybdenum oxide-based samples, it, well, it, this, this interdiffusion can also explain the, the VOC loss. So in conclusion for these two studies, so in the case of the photodegradation and the influence of the ETL, we managed to, uh, to identify two, uh, two degradation mechanisms, uh, which uh, depending on the ET ETL used, in the case of titanium oxide samples, we, we observed the formation of a, of a dipole. And in the case of zinc oxide, we, we observed some degradation at the interface uh, with the active layer. And in the, the case of the thermal degradation, we, we observed, we, we identified a specific degradation in the case of molybdenum oxide-based samples with uh, silver. And the silver induces two phenomena. First, a roughening of the electrode, uh, and also uh, an interdiffusion uh, of the different layers in the, in the active layers. And uh, surprisingly, this, this interdiffusion uh, only leads to a drop of ZOC in the case of molybdenum oxide-based samples. So, perspective for this, uh, this study is do these degradation mechanisms occur also on other uh, OPV systems and right now we are working with low band gap materials and also uh, non ferrine acceptors. So I will just end uh, with the end acknowledgement with the people who did all these jobs, Giorgio, Aurelien and William, my colleagues at IMS, the people in Stanford and in CNBG for RBS experiments. The financing institution and you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much for the
interesting talk. Now it's open for questions. Thank you. I have a question about your photodegradation of the devices with zinc oxide and UV. Is it reversible? No, it's not reversible. <laughs> we checked it. <laughs> and I would have the second part of that question. Uh, what do you suggest to do in order to prevent that effect? Mm. So we, uh, I, I think we can do some passivation of the, uh, of the uh, metal oxide layers. So right now what we, we have in mind to use some, um, some for example, self-assembled monolayer to, uh, to, to passivate the zinc oxide or titanium oxide uh, uh, surface and, uh, uh, and prevent the, the direct contact between the oxide and the active layer. I don't know if it will, uh, maybe it will degrade the, the, the sand and uh, then the, the effect will be uh, even worse, but uh, at least that's, that, that might be a solution. Any other questions? Let's then thank speaker again.